Buenos dias, my friends. My name is Pierce, and this is my channel, Tales from the Road. Thanks so much for stopping by. Because you clicked on this video, today we're going to talk, obviously, about the beautiful South American nation of Argentina. I spent just about five weeks living and traveling in Argentina, and today I'm going to give you my tips and tricks to tackle this illustrious, large, and World Cup winning nation in South America. If that sounds good, come along. Let's start with Argentina's geography and location. Argentina is located on the South American continent and is bordered by Chile to the west, Paraguay and Bolivia to the north, Brazil and Uruguay to the northeast. Argentina has lots of interesting geographical regions and it's probably one of the most diverse and most epic places to visit if you like outdoors activities, specifically like hiking. Patagonia is a wonderland of jagged mountains, lakes, and rough coastlines. It's that sort of southern hemisphere near Antarctica place that's just so unique and really doesn't have any comparisons around the world. To the north of Argentina, you'll find the Andes region, a diverse place with lots of indigenous people, a place that's akin to Bolivia in a lot of ways. In the central part of Argentina, you'll find the Pampas, which are the notorious flatlands where cattle farmers and gauchos, who are like the cowboys of Argentina, rose to fame. In the northeast, you'll find one of the world's greatest waterfalls, the Iguazu Falls, an absolute milestone travel item for some people. If we look at Argentina historically, I like to look at it in three sort of historical eras. You have, of course, the pre-colonial era, the pre-Spanish colonial times, where indigenous tribes, indigenous communities, um, inhabited the region of what is now Argentina for thousands of years. Uh, these tribes didn't have necessarily a lot of communication from north to south and were all distinct, diverse, and spoke different languages with different recorded histories and different peoples. The Spanish arrived in South America in the early 1500s and colonized pretty much the entire continent um, as all the way up to the United States. Argentina was of course part of this and was part of the Spanish Empire for, you know, two to three hundred years. In the 1800s, the Argentinian national identity broke away and they created their own national state, which is what we consider Argentina today. Argentina has gone through federal republics, it's gone through dictatorships, it's gone through modern democracies, and it's made a lot of progress to the modern state which it is today. Because of this colonial conquest, as well as being a modern state in South America today, Argentina is quite a diverse place with people coming from different European backgrounds, such as French, Spanish, Portuguese, and specifically Italian, where over 60% of Argentinas have some sort of Italian ancestry, specifically from the city of Genoa or other northern parts of Italy. Argentina also has a notable um, indigenous community, most of which can be found in the north near the Bolivian and Paraguayan borders. This really means that Argentina really is in the middle on both indigenous and European tradition in a South American context. So that's a little overview about Argentina. Let's get more into the specifics. Visas. The good news for Americans is that all of us can go to Argentina for up to 90 days visa free. You don't need a visa. You don't need anything in particular. You just can buy a plane ticket to Buenos Aires, hop on a plane and come on down. The flight is very far. I was actually surprised how far it was because we often forget that South America is not only south, but it is also east. So if you're on the west coast of the United States, you may have to fly to New York or Miami before you can fly to Buenos Aires. My flight total time from Los Angeles was about 14 hours, so pretty far. Money. The long story short is that the Argentinian economy is having a tough time. The Argentinians use the Argentinian peso, which currently today has an exchange rate of about 280 to one US dollar. Now, the issue with this is that the US dollar to the peso is always changing because the peso is incredibly devalued and Argentina is experiencing some of the world's worst inflation year by year. Basically from the time that I lived in Argentina in March of 2022 to the time that I made this video in December of 2022, the valuation of the dollar to the peso changed from 210 to 280. So uh, that can give you a little bit of information about the craziness that they're experiencing with their economy. The one thing I wanna tell you is that Argentina has two exchange rates. Now, what does that exactly mean? This parallel exchange rate is because Argentina has a fixed national exchange rate, which is a fixed amount that's set by the Argentinian National Bank. 
The second one is the black market exchange rate, also called the blue parallel, which is the actual exchange rate on the international market, the one that's not being fixed or manipulated by the Argentinian government. That means if you use your credit card in Argentina, because it's fixed by the national bank, you will get an awful exchange rate and you will get about 50% less valuation for the money that you're taking out. I would never recommend anyone to use a credit card in Argentina. I would never recommend anyone to use an ATM in Argentina. You will lose so much money transferring uh, your US dollars to Argentinian pesos this way. And it's truly uh, a bit of a scam. What you do is there's something called the blue parallel rate. You can find that rate online and I'll put a link um, to it below in this video. And that parallel you can access by transferring money to yourself in via MoneyGram or Western Union. Uh, all you do is you use Western Union, normally you have to pay some sort of small fee, and then you can transfer yourself money in. The, you go to the Western Union office, you show them your transfer sh uh, sheet, and they will give you cash. This does mean that you're going to get fat stacks of cash um, in country, but it's much better to have fat stacks of cash that uh, give you about 80% more value than the uh, exchange rate that you would normally get with your credit card. The cool part about this is, is that in Argentina, the companies all know that you are probably going to be paying in cash or in some way through Western Union. So there's lots of uh, different companies, even airlines that will accept cash in which you can pay at a cash point or at a store that has a partnership with Western Union or Pago Facil, which is easy pay. It's a sort of a cash pay system that you can buy things online via cash. This whole economy is set up so that Argentinians specifically can get money from outside Argentina, import it into Argentina, and then use it um, in various ways as the current salary they're being paid, the hyperinflation, and the fixed price that the government puts on the exchange rate are all devaluing the currency to high hell. It's a tricky system, but it's worth it to do a little bit of research. So uh, if you're going to Argentina, this is definitely what you want to do. Transportation. Argentina is an absolutely massive country. If you look at it on a map, it looks pretty big, but when you get to Argentina, I think you realize how big it is. Buenos Aires is a massive city, a city of 16 million people, and it's the kind of jumping off point where most people will go in Argentina, especially on a trip, especially flying internationally. From there, getting from city to city is tough because the distances are far. The next nearest city is Cordoba, which is I think the second city of Argentina, but it's about an eight and a half hour bus ride from Buenos Aires. Other cities that people like to visit, including Mendoza, Salta, or if you want to go south into Patagonia, all require, you know, uh, multi-hour car rides, 10, 20, 30 hours through tough terrain, especially when you get north into the Andes. The best way to get around Argentina is to take local Argentinian airlines. Um, they fly everywhere in the country domestically. They are a little bit expensive, but you can get better prices than you would on a general South American airline such as LATAM or Avianca. Uh, the cool part about this is that you can pay for them via Pago Facil, so you don't have to use your credit card online and uh, pay double the price than you normally should. That means that if you're booking ahead and you want to pay in Argentinian pesos online, wait to book that until you get to the country. Don't book it in advance because if you book it in advance, obviously you're going to pay a much higher price than you would if you're going to pay through Pago Facil in the country. I found all the airlines to run smoothly, the airports are nice and easy to use, uh, the buses between the cities are also nice and easy to use, and every city has lots of taxi apps if you're trying to get around in the city itself, which are not only convenient but also cheap. I used Cabify almost the whole time I was there. It was cheap, easy, and pretty safe, which is the main point in a South American country. The transportation in Buenos Aires is tough as the city holds nearly half of the entire population of Argentina, which means traffic. Buenos Aires also has an integrated bus and metro system, so that can help you definitely get around. Although taxis are so cheap, it's kind of hard not to use them because they are a little bit more efficient. But uh, if you do get caught in traffic, then obviously they're not that efficient in the long run. Safety. Argentina, in comparison to almost all South American countries, felt probably the safest in regards to walking around the streets, specifically at night. One thing you have to consider in South America is that city centers typically are not very safe and walking around at night is not particularly safe. And if you're not using a taxi app, that can also be quite dangerous. Um, I found a city center in Buenos Aires to be pretty safe and for there to be a large police presence, uh, which was positive because a lot of other cities that I went to in South America, that wasn't the case. Um, I also went to Salta in the north, Mendoza in the east, 
um, as well as some other little cities around Buenos Aires, and all of them felt pretty safe in their own right. The biggest thing that you want to avoid in any city in South America is just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So if the neighborhood says, don't be here at night, don't be there at night. There's a very famous neighborhood in Buenos Aires called La Boca, which is a beautiful area with known for lots of tango dancing and a really good vibe. But at night, it gets a little bit sketchy. So instead of like taking a risk and trying to stay there the whole day and then grabbing dinner down there, it's just better for your own safety to go down there for the day. And then when the sun starts to set, you know, you hop in a taxi and you go to a safer part of town. The rule of thumb when you're traveling in South America, even though Argentina is more or less safe, is that uh, you just need to be aware of where you are, you need to be aware of what time it is, and you need to be aware of uh, your person, your phone, your wallet, and all of that good stuff. One city that is getting notoriously dangerous in Argentina is the city of Rosario, which is about a four and a half hour drive from Buenos Aires. Um, there's a lot of gang activity, a lot of drug violence, and it's gaining a reputation as one of the worst cities in South America for violence. So. Um, if you're on a trip and you want to see a cool city, I'm not sure Rosario is the best one for you. It is where Messi is from, so if you want to take the pilgrimage to see Messi's house, of course I'm talking Messi, the most famous soccer player in the world, um, that's something that you can obviously do. Just don't stick around too long and definitely not after dark. Internet and SIM card. I found that the SIM cards in Argentina were all pretty easy to use and pretty easy to find. The only issue was that the stores, especially in Buenos Aires, are often quite busy, so you have to wait a while to get a SIM card. Also, I found that some stores don't often sell SIM cards to tourists, so you might end up going to one, they, you wait in a line for 45 minutes, and then they say, oh, sorry, we don't sell SIM cards to tourists. That did happen to me once, and it was very annoying. But the second time I got my SIM card, I never had to worry about it again, so um, that's neither here nor there. Also, we found that the internet speed in Buenos Aires was incredibly fast and the uh, data coverage in the country was pretty good even in the Andes region. Language. Since Argentina was part of the Spanish Empire, Argentina speaks Spanish. Although, this wasn't always the case. There was a time in the 1800s where Argentina had so many immigrants from Italy that they actually had a vote to determine whether they would like their state uh, language to officially be uh, Spanish or to be Italian they decided that it made more sense for it to continue being Spanish because they wanted connection with the rest of South America and didn't want to be a sad little Italian island in a continent of Spanish and Portuguese speakers. The Argentinian Spanish is kind of strange. They use some very different pronunciations than uh, a lot of other Spanish, specifically Costa Rican, Colombian, Mexi Mexican Spanish, and of course uh, Castellano, which comes from Spain. Uh, the Spanish is notably different in Argentina because of how they treat their double L's. Normally it's a Y in other Spanish dialects, but in Argentina it's a SH. So it takes a word like calle, which means street, to calle, which can be quite confusing if you're trying to ask which street this is and you're not understanding the response. Argentinian Spanish also has a lot of Italian influence in it and has many loan words from the Italian immigrants that moved to Argentina. You see a lot of also dialectical words from Genova, which is the city that many Italian immigrants came from in Italy. With all that being said, if you know the basis of Spanish, the hola, buenos dias, como estas, that all works totally fine in Argentina. No one will have a problem understanding you. You just might have a problem understanding them. So let's talk a little bit about my favorite topic, food. Argentinian food is a really nice mix of the best of European cuisine. I say that because it's really hard to find indigenous food in Argentina at all, unless you go to the northwestern part of Argentina near the Paraguayan or Bolivian borders. There, if you want, because they have the sort of Andes cuisine and a lot more indigenous people, you'll find the traditional foods such as llama, maybe some more corn dishes, maybe some spicy chili type dishes. But in the south, especially in Buenos Aires and Cordoba and Mendoza and other places in the really populated areas of Argentina, what you're going to find are a conglomeration of the best hits of Spanish cuisine and Italian cuisine mixed in with the steakhouse parija or grill house culture. Probably the most common food you find outside of Argentina that's branded Argentinian are Argentinian steakhouses. 
You can find lots of Argentinian restaurants specializing in steak and other grilled meats. These places are called parillas, or literally grills in Argentinian Spanish, and they typically have an open charcoal grill in which they grill up all the different kinds of animal products that you can find in the country. Beautiful cuts of pork, beautiful sausages, especially morcilla, which is a blood sausage, that's, which is really one of the most popular in Argentina. And of course, spicy chorizo, which is the national sausage and maybe the most famous dish in the whole country. You can find uh, choripan, which is like chorizo in a bread, which is one of the most common street foods that you can find pretty much on any street corner around the country as well. The most Argentinian thing you can do is order a big steak, grab a big glass of Argentinian red wine, and have a nice time. Of course, the most famous food that you can find in Argentina, the notorious export that you're starting to see besides the steak is empanadas, which are little stuffed uh, bread items normally filled with beef or various mixtures of chicken or what have you. Uh, these are kind of the lifeblood of Argentinian street food and are so good that you won't just have one, you might have six. All right, now let's talk about my top five favorite things to do in Argentina, things that I did and that I need to recommend. So, number one is you need to spend time in Buenos Aires. This is one of the best cities in South America, if not one of the best cities in the world. It's got really cool, hip bar streets, it's got really amazing restaurants, it's got the beautiful coastline that connects it to the uh, bay that also is shared by Uruguay. It's got a really uh, nice vibe with old, beautiful Spanish buildings, old Argentinian historical buildings. It's got the soccer culture. I mean, Buenos Aires is really the center of the country. You're talking a uh, capital city of over 16 million people. Uh, if you want to do anything particular, you've got to do it in Buenos Aires. And one of the best things you can go do is also to see live tango dancing. Um, it's such a unique and beautiful experience with both uh, young and old Buenos Airesians. I don't know, could we? Buenos Airesers. Uh, joining in on the festivities and it's a beautiful way to spend a really local traditional uh, Saturday night in a city with so much vibrant activity. Number two is you have to go to Iguazu Falls in the northeastern part of the country. These falls are absolutely fantastic. They're epic. They're everything that Niagara Falls is in the United States or Angels Falls is in Venezuela. Um, that is a cool pocket of the world as well as you can uh, quickly slip over the border into Paraguay or into Brazil as it's sort of in a triangle between all the different countries. Um, it's a bit far from Buenos Aires. You normally would have to fly there to Iguazu, but um, a lot of people do it and you can see three countries pretty easily all at the same time. Number three would be to head north into the Andes region. You can start in Salta and then kind of make your way up into Jujuy, which is the uh, Bolivian border. This area feels nothing like the Argentina that you may have been to if you've been to Buenos Aires. The majority of the people are indigenous. Some of them still speak the indigenous Quechua or um, Guarani languages. The food is different. The landscape is very rocky, very mountainous. Nothing like the Argentinian Pampas from the central region. It just feels like a different country. The fourth thing that anyone has to do in Argentina is go to Patagonia. I didn't go there, unfortunately, because it uh, was the winter and it was too cold when I was there. It's important to remember that the winter and summer are changed in the southern hemispheres. So if you're there in the summer in the northern hemisphere, then you're actually there in the winter, which is what happened to me. Um, Patagonia is just a land of wonder. It's the best place that you can hike maybe in the world. You have so many diverse and epic landscapes. You have the rugged coastline, you can go see penguins if you want to, and you can even go to the most southern city in the world, Ushuaia, and then hop on a cruise ship to go to Antarctica, which I hope to do one day. Number five is you have to do something cultural that makes Argentina unique. So, one, you can go to a tango hall. I definitely recommend it. It's something that's so vibrant, so unique, and so enjoyable. You can go see a soccer match. You can, of course, see Boca Juniors, which is located in the La Boca neighborhood, which I talked about earlier in the video. Uh, it's just, uh, it's not just a culture, but it's a lifestyle, and, and soccer is such a big deal to uh, the people of Argentina, and it's really a notorious part. And if you see a soccer game, see some tango, and go eat a steak in the same day, I don't think you can have any more of an Argentinian experience than that. So that being said, in all honesty, I really do like Argentina. I think it's one of my favorite countries of South America, and I will say on the record that Buenos Aires is my personal favorite city in the entire continent of South America, having been to over 10 countries on the continent. 
That's gonna do it for me in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the information. I'm always happy to present it. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps me out. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and adios. Salute.